Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video I'd like to do some distortion measurements within Arda and we're going to look at different ways of looking at distortion whether it's harmonic or intermodulation. So for today what I'm testing is a small 5 inch SP Acoustics woofer and I'm using a decibel meter positioned one meter away from the baffle of the speaker to calibrate my overall level. And so for today we're testing a 80 dB SPL at one meter and the measurement microphone is placed two centimeters away from the front baffle of the woofer. So I'm doing what's called a near field on the, on the woofer driver itself. And so what I'm gonna do initially is do a frequency response measurement and look at harmonic distortion. And so let's get started on that. And so if we go, I have my level set to minus 18 dB, which corresponds to 80 dB test signal using my decibel meter. And then I've centered the peak, and so make sure your uh, checkbox is checked here. And also for harmonic distortion, your sequence length needs to be set at 64K or higher. So I'm going to do a sweep now. Okay, so let's look at up in the analysis uh, tab and then under frequency response and distortions. We can see our results here, and so if we look at 100 dB SPL, or sorry, 100 hertz at 80 dB, we can see here that the second harmonic is around minus 45 dB, and the third harmonic is minus 53 dB. Okay, so those values, um, we'll just kind of make a mental note of what those are at for the, for the following tests, and so we're going to close this out. Now we're going to go to the spectral analysis portion of ARDA, which is this area here. So if we click on this, what it's going to do is a real-time spectral analysis of the test signal. So we can play different test tones, and ARDA has a pull-down menu here where you can pick whether you want to do multi-tone or sine tone or just external noise. I'll do external noise right now just so you can see what the noise environment is like in my room. So I've hit the play button. You'll see it takes a bit of time because I do have the, um, the sampling rate quite low. I'm just going to hit reset after I stop talking just so you can see. Okay, so you can see the trend that we're around one, minus 100 dB in the noise floor for my, for my test equipment and, and the, the noise environment in my room. And so just you can use that as a reference and just you'll want to double check to make sure that you're, you're, you have a good signal to noise ratio. That's one of the reasons why I have the test microphone so close to the driver so that we get good signal to noise. So let's start with the uh, sine wave and it's going to um, produce a sine tone and it'll, again it'll take about five seconds for it to produce a result on my on my screen here. Okay so you can see some results here the uh, when you do the test tone it puts the fundamental at zero and then the uh, you can see the second harmonic here is if we try to we can use the left and right arrows to position it right at 200 hertz and so you can see it's at minus 47 dB if we skip to um, the 300 hertz we'll have to get the cursor or sorry get it right on 300 hertz to see the actual value so it's around minus 35 dB uh, on the third harmonic and so that's over 1% distortion when we look at testing this way. And you can see all the other, other um, sidebands that are created as a result of that 100 hertz test frequency. Now if we go to a multi-tone, I can show you the settings that I have for my multi-tone. So this area here is how you configure your multi-tone. I'm doing a 9 band per octave test signal from 50 hertz to 2000 hertz. And I've had to increase the, the level by 10 dB when you're doing a multi-tone uh, to, to match the 80 dB SPL test signal. So there's about a 10 dB difference between just a single sine tone and a multi-tone.
Okay, so this is giving you uh, more information on the what I call the distortion profile of the driver. And so if we look here, I've kept the divisions in the vertical to 10 dB. So we can basically count that at 100 hertz, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and about uh, 5 dB there. So about minus 45 dB noise floor at 100 hertz, and we're looking at a test multitone signal. Um, so yeah, this is uh, another method that you can use. Now, I did a little uh, test where I wanted to make sure that these distortion artifacts weren't from the test equipment, whether it be the microphone or the amplifier, um, so or my sorry, my preamplifier for the microphone. And so what I decided to do was just do a test where the microphone was at uh, 10 centimeters away from the driver, and then I moved, I doubled the distance. I then conducted another test where it was 20 centimeters away, and then I did a third test where it was 40 centimeters. And, and a fourth test where it was 80 centimeters away. And what I wanted to see was is, is if, the, if, if the distortion is from the driver itself, then as I move the microphone away, the distortion products should remain the same in terms of the noise floor. And so when I did that, you can see here, I, I conducted, this is at the 80 centimeter uh, mic distance and test SPL in this instance was 90 dB. Um, and so uh, I had 65 dB noise floor and this was measuring the high frequencies. As I bring the microphone closer, you can see the, the level goes up uh, because I'm moving closer to the speaker and we have the same dynamic range, minus 65 dB. As I go to 20 centimeters mic distance, again it goes up um, and I maintain that same dynamic range. And then if I go right up to the driver and only being 10 centimeters away, you can see that it consistently keeps my range the same. So what this is telling me is that the distortion products are dominantly from the driver itself. If you, for reference, here are my settings that I've used in Arta if you want to try to replicate these results. So these are the sequence length and sampling rate. I use an exponential averaging and I use, typically use Kaiser 7. And um, these are the, this is the multi-tone setup that I use for bass. And then for treble, uh, here are my settings as well. So just the only thing you're going to likely want to change when you do the high frequencies is to increase the sampling rate. So if you're wanting to measure up to 20 kilohertz, then you'll have to do two times that to, to achieve the, so the Nyquist frequency, so uh, 96k at least, or sorry, 44k at least. And if you want increased uh, resolution, then you can jump it up um, even higher. So I hope this was uh, useful for you. Um, and I encourage you to do some distortion measurements. It's quite revealing uh, where driver's limitations are, especially when you're dealing with smaller drivers like the 5-inch uh, SP acoustics that I've done in this test. There's nothing wrong with the driver. It's uh, an average performer. Um, it's just uh, great to be able to see where the limitations are and where you need to uh, either add more drivers or increase the size of the driver so that it has more capability uh, for overall out output SPL. So that's it for today. Take care and have a great day.